Hi guys, this is Sai at Lakeland Ascents and Highland Ascents. And in today's video, what we're going to do, we're going to look at how we fit crampons to our boots. We're going to look at three different types of crampons, a C1 crampon, a C2 crampon, and a C3 crampon. And we're going to fit that to the relevant boot, so a B1, a B2, and a B3 boot. If you don't know what a B1, 2, 3 boot is, check out the uh, video that we've got on our channel about that. Um, there should be a link uh, in the description below and, and go, and, go and check that out. Um, we're just going to focus on crampons on this video. So let's have a look. Okay, so first things first, we've got a B1 boot here which, like I say, check out the link in the, link in the description if you want to know what that actually means. But essentially, this is a three-season walking boot that's super flexible. So what we need for that boot is a super flexible crampon. And this is a C1 crampon, which is super flexible. It's basically a walking crampon. And it just means that when the boot flexes, the crampon flexes with it and the two don't get pushed apart. Okay, C1 crampon as well has a big plastic cradle at the back that the heel cup fits in and a plastic uh, kind of bail on the front that the uh, toe box fits in. So it'll fit on any boot, okay? It'll fit on a B1, it'll fit on a B2, and it'll fit on a B3 boot. It'll even fit on a B0 boot, but we definitely wouldn't really, wouldn't recommend that. Check out the boot video for more info on that one. So the first thing we need to do is work out what uh, foot our crampon goes on, okay? And an easy way of doing that is just to put the crampon in front of you and work out where this buckle is, okay? And this buckle is going to go on the outside of the boot, so it's out of the way of your other foot, which is going to be swinging through here, so we're not going to potentially catch our crampon points on this buckle and fall over. So it goes on the outside of the boot. So if that's on the outside, this must be a crampon for my left foot. Okay, so here we've got a left boot. When we fit our crampon, if we're doing this with our uh, boot on our foot, what we're going to do is really step into that toe box area and push forward at the same time as dropping our heel down, making sure that the toe continues to be pushed forward in, in between these two lugs here so we get a really good fit. Um, so we're going to push forward. We're going to make sure that the uh, toe is right in between these two front lugs and then we're going to rock the uh, plastic cradle back okay what we're looking for here is these lugs at the back okay if we just look nice and closely there's two lugs at the back of the crampon and they should be pushed right up against the uh, heel of the actual boot if they don't fit if they're too far away or too close what we can do is just lift this little lever here okay and slide the crampon bar to make it smaller or larger so I've just shrunk it by one notch so if I push it back in now as you can see I've got my toe area pushed right against the front lugs and I've got my rear um, lugs pushed right against the peel of the crampon which is basically going to give me a good fit now what we're going to do make sure that's nicely seated and this strap here is going to go through the front cradle of the crampon. Okay, and what we're going to make sure is that this strap here doesn't have any twists in it. Okay, so it's nice and neat, there's no twists like this. Next thing is turn this round. I'm going to go through the hole on the heel cradle again making sure there's no twists nice and neat again and then we're going to go across the front of the boot through both of those uh, little kind of metal loops and then just before we do anything else we're just going to tighten all this up okay so we're going to pull that nice and tight pull that nice and tight pull that nice and tight okay and then I've gone through two loops and back through one loop okay Pull that nice and tight, pull that nice and tight, and that's our crampon essentially fitted. All right, when we check to see if our crampon fits well, what we're going to look for is that this toe area is nicely seated in between the lugs of uh, the front of the crampon, okay, and that there's no gap in between the boot and the crampon where snow can get in and push the two apart. We're also going to make sure that the lugs at the back are as close as they possibly can be 
to the uh, heel of the crampon and again that there's no um, no gap. We're also going to make sure that there's as little a gap as possible in between the crampon and the actual sole of the foot. And if we look at the bottom of the boot, the, the crampon itself sort of follows as best it can the sort of shape of your boot, okay? Um, so that's as nicely fitted and what you should find is when you try and move the two independently of each other, they're absolutely stuck together. So that's a really good fit for that B1 boot and that C1 crampon. What you'll see now is we've got loads of spare um, um, strap. Um, we need to do something with that. So if this was my crampon and I knew it was only ever going to go on these boots, I'd probably give that a trim about here, you know, eight or nine centimeters long, and then just tuck that excess strap under one of the other straps. But these get worn by all our clients, so you know, it depends on the size of the boot that's going to they're going to go on. So what I would recommend is you just tie a nice neat knot around the outside strap. So maybe a couple of twists. And then back down through those twists works quite well. Tuck the excess out of the way. Okay, and then that's just out of the way. You know, you can't get it caught on anything. You can't trip over. Uh, another great idea, if you have got a gaiter here with a Velcro uh, flap across the front, you can just tuck that excess strap into your gaiter, uh, Velcro it over, and that's kind of out of the way, really. Brilliant. So that's our C1 crampon fitted to our B1 boot. Okay, so moving on, we've got a B2 boot here, which is kind of your sort of classic, easier winter mountaineering boot, sort of scrambling boot, great for kind of long uh, sort of winter walking days or when the terrain's a little bit more technical. Um, and there's not much flex in this, but there's enough flex that it's going to be comfortable for those longer days. And we've got here a C2 crampon to fit onto our B2 boot, so, I, so it should be a perfect fit. Just a little bit of a side note, um, just because all your mates have got Gravel crampons, it doesn't mean Gravel crampons are going to be right for your boot. So go to the shop, go to a good shop. Just as a bit of a side note, just because all your mates have got Gravel crampons doesn't necessarily mean that Gravel crampons are going to be right for your boot. So take your boot to a really good shop with good knowledgeable staff and try loads of different crampon types or crampon brands even on your boot until you get a really good fit. It's really important that you get the best fitting crampon for your boot. Okay, so these should work really well. These are Saliva boots, this is a Saliva crampon, so you kind of hope they're gonna work well together. Um, let's see how that goes. Okay, so like we said earlier, we can tell how which foot this is for because we've got the buckle on the uh, left-hand side, which means it must be on the outside of our foot, which means, again, this is for, for the left-hand boot. So here's the left-hand boot. So we're gonna push the toe box in between the front lugs and then drop the heel. And what we can immediately see is there's absolutely no way that that heel lug is going to fit around the back of this boot. So what we need to do is just pull up the little uh, retainer here and let the crampon bar extend slightly. So let's try it again. So now the heel fits quite nicely uh, in the back of those lugs. We could maybe get it just one shorter just for a really tight fit there we go so whether you can see on there i don't know but there's absolutely no gap at all now between the lug and the heel area of this crampon they're actually touching okay so the difference between a c1 and a c2 crampon um, other than the C2 crampon being a bit more aggressive it's got more aggressive points 14 pointing forward um, is that it's got this um, clip on the back, okay? And the way that basically works is it sits on this little ledge on the back of your B2 boot. So there's no way that you can fit a C2 crampon on a B1 boot because it doesn't have that ledge, okay? It's just not going to work, all right? However, you could fit this C2 crampon on a B3 boot because that does have the ledge, okay? You can sort of see how this works. So what we want to do is we want to get this little clip to sit on this boot so we line it up and then we just try and push it up okay we push up push our hand up on this little uh, this little clip here until it locks on clips onto the back of the boot and you can see it's just not going to happen there. I'm just going to break something so we need to adjust that slightly and what we've got is a little dial and they all, they all, they all vary different types we've got this little dial 
in the uh, the back of the bail here. And what we're going to do is just loosen that off to a point that I can quite easily, he says, clip that onto the back of the crampon. Okay. What we're looking for is a really good fit. And a good tip is you want a big clunk when you clip that back on. So let's just see how if we get that clunk. Okay, here we go. Okay, so hopefully you can hear that. That was a really good clunk. I had to work quite hard to get that on, but not so hard that it just literally wouldn't go and I was going to break something. But what that basically does is when you clunk that onto the back, is it really pushes that sort of toe area in between those lugs there, okay? We end up with a really good fit. We end up with the, uh, the toe area really pushed tight against those lugs, and hopefully we have like zero gap in between these two, um, these two lugs at the back. Sometimes, well, kind of a top tip, I like to slightly undersize my crampon. So, you know, when I kind of push my toe box in and drop the heel in without messing around with this bail at all, it doesn't fit. It's actually slightly too short, but what happens is when I clunk that up, it really pushes my toe into the front of the crampon, and then the heel just drops in between those lugs perfectly, and I get like a really nice tight fit. Again, it depends on your boots, it depends on your crampon. Have a really good play at home with just getting the fit absolutely nailed before you head on the mountain. You know, just little slight tweaks here, tweaks here and there can make a massive difference. Okay, so with a B2 and C2 combination, quite often you find that even before you've done anything with these straps, you get absolutely no movement at all between the boot and the crampons. You've already got a really tight fit even before we've started messing with the straps. And the strap, the straps kind of work in a similar way to the uh, to the C1, They're just not quite as complicated. So they go underneath here. Okay, just making sure that we've got no twists, okay, on the inside of the boot that we can catch the other crampon on. And then rather than them going through this, across the boot, sorry, what we do is we're just going to the front, through our two um, uh, rings, two metal rings, back through one. And then all we've got to do is just cinch that up tight. It's difficult to do that down, but cinch that up nice and tight. And again, we can just sort that spare strap out however, however we need to, okay, or cut it short if that's appropriate. And again, what we should have here is no gap at the front for any snow to get to get in. A nice kind of fitted crampon on the bottom, okay, um, and you know no gap underneath the boot and again nice and nice and tight uh, to the to the rear lugs and no movement between the crampon and the boot when we when we try and kind of move them independently. So the only thing I'd say with this crampon here is if we look at the sort of shape of the crampon in relation to the shape of the boot, it doesn't kind of follow it perfectly. So you know maybe I would try a different crampon with this boot just to see if I could kind of make that a little bit better or even a different, slightly slightly different shaped uh, bar that could work as well. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so last one, we've got our B3 boot. Okay, so a fully stiff climbing boot. And the B3 boot's got the little ledge at the back, but it's also got the little ledge at the front to take a C3 crampon, which is a really stiff crampon. And it has this bale at the front, which is gonna to attach onto our front ledge and the really sort of familiar by now, bail at the back that you get on a C2 crampon as well. So we could fit a C2 crampon to this boot, no problem at all, because obviously we've got our little ledge at the back and the cradle would just sit over the toe box. We don't need to use that front um, ledge at all. But if we're gonna go climbing, we might as well take advantage of a fully stiff and, still fully stiff and climbing crampon with this sort of extra security of this, uh, this uh, front bail. So let's see how that works. So once again, we put the crampon out in front of us and we've got the buckles this time on the right hand side. So that needs to be on the outside of my boot, which basically means this is for the right foot. So I've got the right foot boot here. Again, I'm gonna step in, but this time, I'm just gonna make sure that this front bail here sits nice and neatly on the, on the front of the boot. And if we can just see there, hopefully, it's nice and neat on the front of that boot. And then I'm gonna drop my heel in. And again, we're looking for, you know, perfect contact really. As small a gap as we can possibly get between the back 
uh, heel of the boot and this little ledge. Again, exactly the same. We're going to bring this, this kind of clamp up and we should hopefully get that really good kind of clunk as it pushes the boot into the front of the crampon and sort of makes contact to the back. Let's have a look. Definitely awkward sat down. Okay, brilliant. So that's a really good clunk. Um, and again, just a bit of twist in the strap. Slight difference this time. So if you remember with the C2 crampon, what we did is we went through the front cradle and then back okay we don't have that front cradle anymore so this just literally goes around the front of the foot through both back through one and we snug that up again we want no space at the front no space underneath no space at the back or as little space as possible absolutely no movement this should be absolutely rock solid with a b3 c3 combination and a cramp on that nice and neatly follows the uh, profile of the boot which these do okay so that's it so hopefully that was useful absolute take-home message here is go and try different crampons with your boot so you get the perfect fit don't be sold by the offers don't be sold by what your mates have got get a good fit that's the most important thing and the second most important thing is sort all this at home before you get on the hill you don't want to be in a white out on the Kangorn Plateau trying to adjust the size of your cramp onto your boots. So if you thought this video was useful, basically you want to hit a like so more people can see it and you know maybe they'll learn something too. And if you thought it was useful too, subscribe to our channel. We're going to be putting loads more content on uh, winter sort of mountaineering skills, loads of stuff on kit and also loads of content on summer scrambling skills, mountaineering skills, rope work, loads of climbing stuff and maybe some kit reviews as well. So, you know, get subscribing. We'll hopefully see you next time. Cheers.